How much do baboons and humans have in common? And what can they tell us about ourselves? Our ideas about both these questions have changed dramatically. 20 years ago, we thought we would be able to understand human origins by analogy with baboons, another primate species that met the challenges of living on the savanna away from the safety of the trees in the forest. The early baboon studies played a very important role in creating a model of a society in which males were the central actors, in which aggression and dominance played a primary role. Males were the policers, the leaders, the protectors. Females were the caretakers and the baby makers. We already had some evidence that in other primate societies, female-based families played a major role in the social organization, and that females were very powerful within their own families. Why wouldn't this be the case among baboons as well? Male aggression is a sure attention grabber. But what males can accomplish through violence turns out to be limited. Shirley Strum quickly realized that these social activities were not only important, but often more complex than they appeared. When you come to a baboon troop, it's very easy to see aggression and to understand what it means. The babies are cute, attractive, it's easy to understand infant development. And also, very obviously, it's easy to understand the role of females as mothers and caretakers. It's not surprising that the early studies focused on these behaviors and those roles for the animals. It takes much longer to see relationships and even longer to understand what those relationships mean. If baboons could talk, I would just ask them to explain what they were doing. But since they can't, I have to watch, and that takes time. Fortunately, I have several terrific helpers, especially Thomas Kingwa, who's my Kenyan project manager. From the beginning, Shirley faced a double challenge. She had to get close to the animals to study them properly, but at the same time, she didn't want her presence to change their behavior. The animals didn't accept me right away, but quite soon they pretty well ignored me. Then I needed a way to describe what each of them did and giving them names made it easier to jot down quick, accurate notes on the spot. This is Seraphim, just a few hours old, totally helpless and wholly dependent on his mother. During daylight hours, the troop is constantly on the move. So Seraphim was born at night because a new mother left behind would be vulnerable to predators. <laughs> Setha, Seraphim's mother, begins grooming her baby immediately. Grooming keeps baboons clean, but even more important, it provides all baboons with reassurance and pleasure. <laughs> Newborns know how to cling and suckle, but everything else has to be learned. This includes how to function as a member of its family and within a wider circle of relationships. 
A little awkwardly, Sethus starts feeding again. In the first helpless days of his life, Seraphim even has to be helped to cling. Though his eyes are still closed, Seraphim is already beginning to learn, sensing through his mother's body her different reactions to other troop members. By the time he's riding on his mother's back, like Sandy here, he'll know friend from foe. Newborns are always a source of interest to the troop, and most of the animals parade by to take a look at the baby. <laughs> <laughs> 